Hey guys, Zero Rex here, and welcome back to another Mindflow tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be moving from this multibot.js script that we left the last episode off with into our colorbot.mjs script, which I'm going to talk about in a minute here, uh, which just adds color to your terminal, essentially. Uh, it's very fancy. I like it. All my bots use it. And it's a bit of an introduction before we move into actual bots because when you're using actual bots, you're usually using them on servers. Servers generally have color in the chat and it's a bit of an introduction to that. So let's just move right into it. Now, a lot of stuff is the exact same. So I've shrinked a lot of it, but if you want to see this code, once again, in the description, every single video, this is GitHub link, you can look at the code yourself or you can just look at previous episodes, I suppose. Um, but there are some things that have changed. Notably, uh, the imports at the top have changed quite a bit because we switched from a .js to a .mjs. Now, don't ask me what .mjs means. I haven't looked it up. I don't really care. The only reason we've changed it, uh, it still works and functions essentially the same as a normal JavaScript file, except the imports are a little different, essentially. I changed it because... Uh, to do color, we use the chalk library, and to use the chalk library, you need MJS. I was told this on stream, and I don't ask very many questions on stream when it comes to this, because when someone who has way more experience than you tells you how to do something, and it just works nicely, and there's no complaints, then you just you move along to the next thing uh, that interests you. So the way to change it is instead of const, you put import, and then the name of the thing. And if you're importing multiple things from the file, then you'd put them in uh, curly braces, but we'll look into that more in future episodes, I suppose. For now, we just switch out the cost for the import, and then instead of equals require, and then all this stuff, you just do from and then in the thing. So instead of require, it's from, and there's no parentheses essentially. And there's also a space here. So you can very easily see this format. You should be able to switch. This shouldn't be any, um, any hassle to anybody who has been keeping up with my videos, especially because it's episode six. Moving on from that, we've added two things. I'll show you guys how both these work. So anytime we want to send something to the chat, we want to make sure we're sending it using a logger. So previously, if we look at on spawn, the chat messages, we just put in the chat message here. Now, this is not necessarily ideal because we don't want to have to put this every single time we want to print something to the chat. Uh, it's kind of just a hassle to put it in. So instead, what we do is anytime we want to put something to the chat, we put it through a log, which is a bit like a filter. And what the filter does, it'll just add the bot's username in little square brackets before uh, it sends the message. So anytime we send any message, we can just use this.log instead of console.log, and it'll put it through this filter, which just adds this little uh, part at the start, and then console logs it. So if we put in, uh, let's say, hello world into console.log, it'll just show hello world. But if we do this.log hello world, then it'll do the bot's username in square brackets and then hello world, which just helps, I guess, clean up the code in the future, where instead of having to put the person's username or the bot's username every single time, we can just put it through the log every time. And then anytime we change something in the log, it changes it everywhere. Moving on from that, let's get into the actual focus of this episode, color, of course. Uh, the way you use color, uh, I use it once here, very simply, and it's for on spawn in. And I think I also potentially use it, oh, I also use it for on login. How exciting. Do, do I use it here too? Oh, I do. Wonderful. Do I, do I also use it in errors? Ah, oh, I don't. Okay. Um, but you'll see here, I use it a, a few different ways. We'll start by talking about this on end uh, event. So... The way it works is anytime you would have just put something uh, like a string into uh, something that logs it, what you'll do is you'll instead put that string into a function that shock gives us and then give that to the logger. So instead of just putting disconnected with the reason into this dialog, we do chalk.red, which will convert this to being red text and put that into the logger. Moving on from that, uh, if we only had keywords like red, blue, stuff like this, there wouldn't be too many colors. There's a slightly more flexible way that we can do this. And it's with ANSI 256. 
If you aren't aware what ANSI and ANSI 256 are, I strongly suggest that you go ahead and look it up. I actually had to look up the table uh, for ANSI 256 when I was coding this, and I still use it very frequently when I'm using chalk. I do this because I don't remember all 256 colors. And if you haven't realized it by now, there's an OS called ANSI 256. It's because it's the collection of 256 colors uh, that is, I guess, under the keyword ANSI. And so chalk gives us this function under chalk.ansi256, where you give it two parentheses. The first one is the color. So the color 46 is some specific color that if you look it up in the ANSI256 table, you'll be able to see very easily what color it is. And then after that, we do another set of parentheses, a little bit different than what you may be more used to in uh, the past where you just give two arguments for the same function. Here we have two different set of parentheses uh, where you give your string. And so what this is going to do is it's going to take the string, uh, convert it to being colored using the chalk.ansi256 uh, 46 color, whatever 46 represent. I forget at this point, but I guess we'll see it soon when I run the script. And throws that into the logger, which then logs it by adding the username at the front. And I do very similarly on login here where I use color 34, which I think is a slightly different shade of green or something like this. Uh, we'll see very soon. Anyways, other than that, it's the same exact script. So let's go ahead and run it. So I'm just gonna open up a client briefly. You guys know the drill by now. I'm gonna open up a single player world in uh, using an account that I have outside of this. I'm going to open up a LAN server, get the port. We're gonna import the port number into bot args here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how all this works. All right, guys, welcome back. As you can see in the top right of the screen, I have a Minecraft client open and I've already started the LAN world and the port number is 57508. So I've gone ahead and imported that into our file here. I'm just gonna make sure I save it so I'm not a dummy. We're gonna do control tilde, which is the hockey to open up the terminal. We're gonna type node space, the name of the script, which is color-bot.mjs, reminder. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. And the most important thing here is going to be looking at the terminal. So I'm going to make it very large so you guys can see it nicely here. As you can see, we've got some color in the chat. So when the bots join and when they leave and all this, there's some more color. Essentially, as you can see, the color that we set, I'm going to scroll this down a bit. We've got a whole bunch of stuff up there. That's uh, future episode stuff. <laughs> but um, here down at the bottom where we had, I think this was in events. On the login, so the ANSI 256 color 34 is this shade of green. And as I said, there's tables online for this. Uh, Bot.end here, chalk.red goes down to this red color. And on spawn, it's a slightly lighter green for number 46. And uh, that's all I've got for you guys today, folks. But in the description, as always, there's three links. One, to find the GitHub repo that has the code for this episode and future episodes and past episodes if you wish to see those as well. We've also got a Discord invite link for uh, Prismarine.js, Prismarine.js, which is the, I guess, umbrella company for uh, Mindflare. So if you need help with Mindflare, that's more in-depth help. If you want like, experts help, uh, you can go there and ask for help. If you're just wanting to chat, uh, talk about the next videos that are coming out, suggesting ideas for next videos to come out, if you want to attend any of my streams, any of this stuff, go ahead and uh, join my Discord. I've got uh, the Xerox 260 Discord in the description. And as always, make sure you subscribe if you want to stay in tune with all my future episodes. Make sure you actually turn on bell notifications. I re very rarely ask for this. But if you're really staying up to date with these videos, you're already on episode 6. Congrats. Uh, make sure you turn on bell notifications, set it to all, so that you don't miss out on any episodes I put in the future. Some very exciting stuff coming in the future regarding Botter and Hypixel, which is very popular. Uh, and other servers, which I, I might delve into if uh, we already get bored of Hypixel a little too quick. And just like the video so more people can see it. There's some people who really don't like these videos for some reason, so they've been disliking. And it's kind of been messing with the, the algorithm a little bit. So it'd be really nice if you just like the video to counter that. It'd be very nice. Anyway, that's all I've got for you guys today, folks. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.